When I was a lot younger, and when I was a kid, I was overweight. Started off a little chunky, you know, baby fat, got into older elementary ages, near adolescence, and I just kind of really ballooned out. I was, I don't know, four foot something and weighed nearly 150 pounds. And the doctor, my pediatrician, told my mom, he is dangerously obese. Something has to be done now or he's going to die. And leading up to that, what my memories, I can remember going through school and having people, my classmates, my teachers even, even my pastor at church and other people at church, it seemed like everywhere I went, people were always picking on me. Why is everybody always picking on me? Coming up with cute names they thought were cute, you know, Butterball. Uh, what is, oh, Big Mac, that was one. My classmates would call me Big Mac. And so finally one day, I said, oh, it's because my name sound, rhymes with Big Mac, Big Mac, Big Mac. And one of the kids said, no, it's because you're round like a Big Mac. And oh, yeah, it does rhyme with your name. <laughs> oh, well, I ought to. So I was ready to lose weight because I was sick of being bullied, sick of being picked on. I'm going to show them. I'm going to get skinny. So we went to... Uh, one of the, it was the very first, as far as I know, my first memory of a diet center. I think that was actually the name of it in this town decades ago. I'll speed up the story. A year and a half later, I'm, I'm losing weight. Like, I mean, I've got this under control. I'm doing it now. I'm not just, you know, you had, they do these weigh-ins every week. And, and they, you know, if I would gain a weight, gain a pound or whatever, oh, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing? What are you eating wrong? You had a children's aspirin, that's got sugar in it. That's why you're up a pound this week. So I was like, screw that. F you food, I'm not eating you anymore. No more food for me. So I, I literally began starving myself. I went to war with food. Food was my enemy. And the only way I could be happy is if I would go to bed at night hungry. If I went to bed starving, feeling that hunger pains, I knew I, I got through the day and I'd look forward to sleep because I could, that meant I could use up as much time as possible sleeping and not worrying about eating, being tempted by awful food. So this went on for some time. I was completely at war with food. And I thought the only way to be happy was to stay skinny, to be skinny. Of course, I never thought I was skinny. Got down to 70 pounds. I, w I mean, oh, I looked like a skeleton with skin stretched across it. But my concept of myself had me believing. I mean, I, I was fat. I was ugly. And food was the enemy. I eventually changed that. I, my concept of myself never hadn't changed. I just looked for other things to make me happy. Things that I needed, that I thought I needed. Back when 7-Eleven oh, was in town, you know, and I, <clears throat> I just was old enough to start buying, uh, you know, those kind of magazines. This was before the internet. So I had drawers full of adult magazines because that was my fulfillment. I needed that constantly to feel complete and whole. And then in college, it was drinking. Alcohol was my answer. Alcohol, I needed to complete myself, to feel happy, and to forget, forget how lonely I was or whatever the seeming causes were, whatever I wanted to, whatever the problem was that I needed to remedy or just forget about. So whether it's food or pornography or alcohol, all of that is looking for something outside of me, looking for something to save me, to fix me, that's not within me. And I'm sure you may have had something or we, we 
all look for things outside of us. We look forward in people. I got to have this person to be happy. If I don't have this person in my life, I'm going to be miserable. Anytime we're looking outside of ourselves for the solution, we're just at war with ourselves and will continue to be. It was all battle with me growing up. Well, then when I was overweight, everybody's always picking on me. It's them, them, them. Everybody hates me. When I was anorexic, food is evil, but I can control it. I got this. This completes me. This makes me have some value now because I'm skinny. I can fit in the smaller jeans. I don't have to wear the Sears and Roebuck tough skins with the elastic waist and the reinforced knees. Oh, I hated those jeans. Until I changed the concept of myself, I was always looking for something outside of me for salvation, for the solution. The Bible says that we are the temple of God, that Jesus Christ, the power and wisdom of God, is in us. And not as a separate schizophrenic being. We don't have two people inside of us. It's us. It's our own awareness. When the self-existent one, called anglicized as Jehovah, tells Moses to tell the people of Israel, when he says, well, who do I say that you are when I go talk to them? And he says, tell them I am that I am. That awareness, that I amness is inside of us. And if we think that our happiness or, or if we blame anybody outside of us for our circumstances, we're never going to get out of that state that we're in. We won't get out of that those circumstances, fate, dealing, battling those circumstances until we change the state, change our concept of ourselves. One of the most disturbing things and the most liberating things in my life was the day that I realized I can blame no one for my circumstances. Oh, that was very disturbing <laughs> and exhilaratingly, uh, exhilaratingly, li I'm using the wrong adverb. It was damn cool. I've got no one to blame but myself. Ugh. But knowing that, I don't need to depend on somebody else to help me fix things. I seek the answer within. What do I want to be? Who do I want to be? And when we change states, and that new state becomes our dwelling place, our thoughts, our reactions, our feelings, everything we experience comes from that new state of being. I'm not afraid of food anymore. I'm not at war with it. If I want to eat some chocolate, I eat some chocolate. I'm not scared of sugar. I'm not, well, I'm certainly not scared of alcohol. I'm not scared of anything. No food frightens me like it used to. And I don't feel like I have to have alcohol to complete me or take pills or go see the doctor every week for some new ailment that I have that I, I need more fixing. I need, I need doc to fix me. It all begins, hell, it all exists within me and within you. There's no, f no reason, no real reason to point your finger at anyone else and blame them. It's all within you. Here's a quote from Neville uh, from the Law of Assumption, I believe, by the lecture. Okay, every moment of time, you must be watchful, aware of what you're imagining. To try to change circumstances before you change your imaginal activity is to struggle against the very nature of things. 
because your imaginal activity is actual productive, ob objective reality. I think I wrote that wrong. <laughs> oh, I, I did write it wrong. Okay, it should say, let me start that quote over. I'm not going to edit this out either. Every moment of time, you must be watchful of what you're imagining. To try to change circumstances before you change your imaginal activity is to struggle against the very nature of things because your imaginal activity is producing objective reality. So until I change that which is the cause of the phenomena of life, I'm going to reproduce the same thing in my world. So start tonight changing it by changing the imaginal activity. So as long as I saw food as the enemy as a kid, I was never getting out of that loop of, I'm not good enough. I have to control something to be better, to give myself value. I have to drink myself into oblivion to forget my problems. I'm not happy unless I have a drink in my hand. Anytime we look to something outside of us as our remedy, as our solution, whether it's food or the absence of food or alcohol or pills, we are giving ourselves over to it. We're enslaving ourselves. We become a slave to that outside cause, that outside remedy, that false God, that secondary cause. First cause. It all begins and exists within us. Change the, your concept of yourself and your outside environment, your world, what you experience and how people experience you and how you experience them. All of that changes. So what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Love you guys. This is Feeling Twisty.